Isaiah chapter number 30. Amos, the 30th book of the Bible. Whoa! Aren't the prophet books so interesting to read? Aren't they just so great that when you see his church signs, God is love. Evidently, they haven't studied 29, 30 chapters of Isaiah. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord. Okay. He's talking to Israel because, I mean, the book is about Israel. That take counsel, but not of me. They don't go to God for the help. There was a king that went off to another god when he was injured. And he has Elijah stop them in their tracks and turns them around and says, you go back and tell them, you know what, you're going to die. Isn't there a god in the land that you can seek? No, you want to go to that false god. That's, that's exactly what this is talking about. The illustration. And that covereth with a covering. Now for the Christian, the covering is the blood. We're covered with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it's a covering you know, anything but God. But not of my spirit. So here, covering and my spirit, you got a preview of the comforter. Right there in the scripture. Jesus turns around and says later, I'll give you my comforter. That they may add sin to sin. Hey, how about adding sin to sin? All right. I'll have a little more sin, please. It's not what you want. Their counsel and their covering is more of a sin to their sin. That walk to go down into Egypt, the world. God told them over and over and over, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. You know what? I'm going to make you go down to Egypt. I'm going to make you serve with rigor so you don't want to go back. And they go back. And have not asked at my mouth didn't go to God to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt they went to Pharaoh and Egypt for trust and not God that's wrong that's deadly wrong that's the, that's the Christian going doing the worldly ways to do what God wants programs and tootsie rolls and anything you else want to do but what God said to do. God said go eat all the world and preach the gospel. That's what he said to do. He said go to house to house. Oh, we'll do other ways. We'll do the Egyptian ways. And that's not pleasing of God. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Well, we brought in the Budweiser, we brought in the, the, the rock music, we got them saved. And those people stand before God, the great white throne judgment be cast in hell, think they're saved. You watch all these church numbers, 4,000 people got saved, yay! And you watch those numbers dwindle down as those people are cast off in Lake of Park. They, never, they, didn't, they didn't get saved. They didn't get saved by the Bible, that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't use the Bible, then you're not doing what the Bible says, and you're not doing what the Bible says, you're not doing it the Bible way, and you're not going to get approved of God. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Today's church doesn't even know what it's doing. God says the sodomite the, the, the man and man, the woman and woman is an abomination, and these churches, should we marry them? What's the Bible say? We don't care what the Bible says. We're of the world. The world says, love them, take care of them. You're a meanie if you don't. Well, we don't want the world to make mad at us, do we? You mean, you're going to take my kid, and you're going to give him pure Bible? Well, I'm not going to send him to your church. I don't want my kid to have entertainment. I want you to give them something to eat too. I want you to feed them. I want you to take care of them. I want you to amuse them. 
And then you want me to go and, and, and take part of what he's been through? I've got a life. Sorry. I don't care about God. You got my kid out of my hair for one or two hours. Listen, you got school today, and you got after school activities, and you got daycare after that, and you got everything. Children are a burden today. Many couples will get married with, with the prospect of, we're not going to have children to ruin our life. They were all ashamed, uh, for, for his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hain. They were all ashamed of the people that could not profit them, 2 Kings 18.21, nor be a help, nor profit, but a shame and also reproach. The world can't help you. More than God can help. You do what God tells you to do, and many people don't want to do it, there is a right way. There is peace. There is love. There is joy. There is long suffering. There is that even amongst a storm. Imagine when the, when the disciples are in the boat and there's a storm, they're sinking, Jesus is back on the pillow of sleep. Imagine if they, they were to call the Coast Guard in. They would not have seen the master, the the the, uh, the weatherman. I don't mean the one that predicts the weather. The one that makes the weather stand up and say, "Peace, be still." They would be like, they would never solve that if they went to the world. Coast Guard would have boarded them on the boat and you know then take them over. They would miss the whole show of what God's power is. The burden of the beast. That's beasts that carry things. The asses of their time, the donkey of the south, into a land of trouble and anguish from, wh from whence come the young and the old lion. Go into a land of trouble. Deuteronomy 17, 14, 1 Kings 10, 28. From whence come the young and old lion, the viper and the fiery, fiery, the fiery flying serpent, Revelation 12. They will carry their riches upon their soldiers, shoulders of young asses. There's the they're beast of burden. And their treasures upon the branches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. Here's a caravan marching on to a land of trouble. I really want to go there. Where there's a lion. He's a young lion. He's the old lion. A viper and a fly, fire, 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 I can't say those three words. Fiery flying serpent. You know who that is? That's Satan. Do you want to go where Satan is? A lot of churches do. One of the churches is spoken about in Revelation is where Satan's seat is. Well, you know, if I'll find where Satan's seat is, and I will leave the area. i got enough problem with Satan following me. I don't need to go where he's dwelling. For the Egyptians, when we story about Egypt, shall help in vain, and to no purpose. Put that in the book of that, that <coughs> I won't <coughs> preach that. <coughs> No purpose. Driven. <laughs> Didn't say the driven verse 6. No purpose verse 7. Oh, well, there is no hell. He's going to be shocked one day. Therefore have I cried concerning this. I, Isaiah. Their strength is to sit still. That's Egypt. That's the church today. It just sits. It doesn't do nothing. It has raffles. What do you do at a raffle? You sit at a table. We're going to have a bake sale. What do you do at a bake sale? You sit at a table. We're going to have bingo. What do you sit at? What do you do at bingo? You sit. It's all sitting. You know, there were churches in England that you didn't sit in pews. You stood for the whole message. 
There were there were times in churches in New England a guy went around and if you fell asleep you got a whack. And you didn't sue him. And it was a shame. We come a long way. The Bible says you're to stand, you're to go. You don't go sitting. Now go. Hey, look at that. Write it before them in a ta table. And note it in a book. That's what we're reading. It may be for the time to come forever and ever. God's warning us. Trying to figure out 2015 over 2,800 years. We're still reading the warning of not going back to Egypt. Stay out of the world. Go to the world and tell them about Jesus. Make a make a living in the world, but don't go to them for help. That this is a rebellious people, lying children. That don't mean lying down and sleeping. That means lies. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Now, who would hear the law of the Lord? The Hebrews, the Jews. They have become lying children. And they're in the world. They're in Egypt. To say this prayer. Which say to the seer. See not. And to the prophets. Prophesied not unto us. Right thing. And Jezebel had her 450 prophets. Ahab had his prophets. And uh, uh, Jehoshaphat said to isn't there here yet a prophet of the Lord? Yeah, I, I, there's one, but I hate him because he doesn't say the right thing. Jeremiah, shut up. We don't want to hear it. Just shut up. Get out of here. Jesus, his, his brothers and sisters, Jesus, why don't you just get out of here? Take your, take your disciples, go over there. They want to hear you, all right? Just shut up. That's what I'm saying. Man, why do you scream at us? Just shut up. We don't want to hear about the Bible. We don't want to hear about that Jesus. It still happened 2015. It'll probably happen tomorrow, Lord willing. They still tell us to shut up. When a, when a man is in a Bible-believing church, outside a pastor, outside a doctrine issue, if he leaves that church because of carnal reasons, he's more than likely telling that preacher by his absence, Shut up. I don't want to hear it no more. Speak unto us. Smooth thing. Television preaching found in chapter 30. Paul calls it itchy ears. Prophesied deceits. The 400 prophets of Jezebel. Jeremiah 11.21, Amos 2.12, Micaiah... 2 6 in Amos 7 13 in Jeremiah's life. Isaiah, I, I mean, not Isaiah, uh, is he Elijah Elijah? I forget which two. Get you, get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. That's what they said when Jesus. That's what they cried, crucify him, crucify him. Get him out of the way. He ain't doing us no good. We want lies. We want deceit. We want the Roman government. We want you to come in here and get rid of the Roman government. They don't want to do right. That's what it's saying. And you give a, you give the modern preacher today, you give him enough rope to hang himself. That's exactly what he'll say. Listen, these people, most of them don't even know God. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel. That's what that's the Holy One of Israel that you told us to cease. You told him to cease. 
You told him, I don't want to have anything to do with you no more. So the Holy One of Israel speaks. Because he despised this word. And trust in oppression and perverseness. And stay there on. And stay, you know, that's exactly what it means. You, you stay on it. You're unmovable. You won't repent. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach. And, that, and that's a hole in a wall. That's a part of a wall that, that's breaking apart. Ready to fall. If you go up to a wall and it's got a breach and it's about to fall, you know where it is. And you know what to do. Swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Well, you know it's there. You haven't done anything to take care of it. And then when the destruction comes, boom, it's, it's gone. It's done. Now you can't fix it. God called out to you. He says, I want you to call that Isaiah. I want you to tell them, fix that breach. We don't want to fix it. Get out of here, man. Shut up. Get out of here. And that wall just gets breachier. Is that the word? Breachiest. And boom, it's done. And then the enemy can come in. The wild animals can come in. And he shall break it. That's God shall break it. As the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. You know, he takes that piece and he just throws it in the ground and broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirt. That's a piece of pottery that's broken. That's what uh, Job took to, to scrape himself. To take fire from the hearth. Or to take water with all out of the pit. You ain't going to survive. You're not going to be able to put yourself back together, as they would say. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not... God saying, I gave you opportunity. I told you what to do. I sent my prophets to you. And you told them to shut up. All the people downtown in Deland, all the people at the farmer's market, one day they're going to stand before God and God's going to say, listen, I sent that church to you. I sent those women and those families and those men to you. And you kept telling them to shut up. Oh, but now you want mercy and grace. Sorry. But ye said, No. For we will flee upon horses. Away from God. Therefore shall ye flee. And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. The swift will be the, the, the dromedary camels that are quick. Alright, go ahead. But the people I'll send after you will be even quicker. You're going to run and I'm going to send people after you. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. One thousand Jews will flee at one person. Who? Adolf Hitler. The Antichrist. At the rebuke of fire shall ye flee. Five people, and you'll run, and five people come up to you and tell you what you need to do, and you'll flee from them. Till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. Not much. Therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. Therefore he will, therefore will he be exalted. That he may have mercy upon you. For the, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they 
that wait for him. God's long suffering. God says, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to break you down like, like a potter would do with his vessel. But you know what? It's going to be a remnant. There's going to be few of a beacon on top of a hill. There's going to be a few of you who will turn to me and will do right. And I will be gracious to you. The others will be pardoned to hell. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. They kind of, but they're not there yet. Thou shalt weep no more. No, that's not today. You ever hear them when, when they go Johnny on the spot media and missiles are firing over there? You hear them crying? Not going to happen in verse 19. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. Now, that's not tears. That's crying out. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. He answered many, many of the Jews today. They don't believe in him. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Ooh, I don't want to eat that. And the waters of affliction. I don't want that. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Chapter 29 verses 11 and verse 18. It'll be coming a day when the book will be open and unsealed, and the blind will see, and the the, the the deaf will hear, and God will God says in the millennium, I'm going to give him teachers to teach him. I would be like if it was the, the disciples. Jesus taught them, didn't he? Don't you go to a teacher to learn how to be a teacher? Wouldn't it be great in the millennium as born again Christians as with the Jews? We get to sit under Peter, James, and John, and Paul, and all that, and sit down and listen to them teach. Wouldn't that be remarkable? Wouldn't it be remarkable to hear, to hear hands-on story being told by the ones that were in the boat the night that the storm came? Wouldn't it be great to hear the hands-on story of Peter taking the ear of the guys off in the garden? Wouldn't it be to hear James' reaction that when they took Jesus away? Wouldn't it be great to hear when, they're, when they were in the room and they were afraid of all that was going on and Jesus just walked through the door and said, Hi guys, how you doing? Wouldn't it be great to hear that? Wouldn't it be great to hear Peter tell about the upper room You know when he gave in Acts chapter 2? That me. You may, we may get an illustration of the Bible one day by those that wrote the Bible and by those who lived the Bible. Teachers. And they're not called rabbis here. They're called teachers. In the Bible school, they're called professors. Did you read about professor in Romans chapter 1? Scholars. I don't find scholars in the Bible. So it might be a possibility. That, you, know, you don't have to take that. You can throw that in the window. But wouldn't it be great to be taught by the, by the apostles of the Lamb? Wouldn't it be great to have Moses get up and teach to people? Wouldn't it be great to have Isaiah and, and Elijah and all that? You know, classroom today, 101. Have turned the warriors into blood and there's Moses up there. Okay, come on, sit down. Let's sit down. Let's talk about Exodus. Wouldn't it be great if Moses taught us all Exodus? Wouldn't it be great to have science class with Professor Moses on the creation of, of everything that is? He wrote the textbook by God. Can you imagine Moses getting up there with all those scholars that are saying it? All right, gentlemen, open my book, the Genesis. <laughs> That'd be a thing. Thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk in. I wish I had that. I wish God would be clear to say, This is where I want you to go. I walk by faith. This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. It's like, it's like those uh, stoplights that have blue arrows. God wants you to turn left, a little left green arrow goes. 
If God don't want you to go left, he stops you. There's no green left. No green, no green arrow right. Go right. Once you stop, the red light comes up. And I'll get angry. Um, he shall he shall defile also the coverings of thy graven images of silver. Silver. Get rid of the graven images. They won't be there in the millennium. And the ornament of thy molten images of gold. You're going to get rid of them. Those who has them. The Jews. That is breaking the commandment number two of the big ten co uh, commandments. Thou shalt have no other God besides me. Thou shalt not make no molten image or the likeness of thereof. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Don't need to explain that. You throw that away in the garbage. You don't keep it. It's not something you keep. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Get out of here, Mr. Idol. Get out of here. Ugh. Gonna say, I got God. He's talking to him. <laughs> you know that he's talking to him. Get out of here. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed. God, the weatherman. Thou shalt sow the ground with all, and the bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous and plenty of tomatoes in that day, and shall the cattle feed in large flash pastures. Gonna be a fruitful it's going to be no Walmart. It's going to be no shopping center. It's going to be farmland as far as the eye can see. Uh, I know Mrs. Holt told me, I forget, which, I think I, uh, Iowa is the way where she lived. or It's just corn and wheat fields as far as you can just see a road. And it's, uh, it's just crops. Today you go on the road, there's a road and there's stores and, and all kinds of junk. And no, It's not going to be that junk. It's going to be a harvest. And you can sit down, uh, maybe up against a fence, and peel some... What was it the disciples had? They had some you know, corn. And no one's going to yell at you like the disciples had. And you could sit there and eat some corn as long as you didn't put it in your basket. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground. So animals are going to work the fields. You have to work in a millennium like Adam had to work. Oh, I thought it was a time of greatness and no curse. Oh, we're going to work. Adam worked before the curse. He was a husbandman before the curse. We're going back to the garden and the animals help. How many animals help? Adam. Oh, honey, would you like those bananas? Yeah, I'd love to have a banana. Monkey? Two bananas. Comes a tree, got two bananas, the third one for himself, breaks it down, gets it out of me. Thank you. Mr. Whale, come on over here. We need to get across this body of water. Thank you. Lions, come over here. We need to go to sleep. Per mode. Oh. That's what the animals did for Adam. They helped him. He was a husband land on the land. So they're helping now. You, you don't believe it? Why wasn't Eve afraid of a talking serpent? Now, if you're in your backyard one day and you know you got your iced tea and you're sitting there and, a, and an animal comes up to you, any animal, pick any animal to walk, and he starts carrying a conversation with you and you're not a parrot. Wouldn't you be a little freak out? Well, hi, that iced tea looks very good, doesn't it? Uh, uh, uh. Hi, Eve. Yeah, yea, as God said, and she never questioned. Does she? Adam named those animals. God gave those animals to help Adam. Do the work of the land. Listen. How can I say this? Because I don't want you to do it. But have you ever watched the Flintstones? You know, the Pigasaurus was the, the garbage disposal. 
the dinosaurs were the, were the the gravel pit digging. The the elephant was the shower and the vacuum. Where did they get that idea from? Where did they get a, a talking rat? We'll move on. Uh, twenty-four. The oxen likewise. Oh uh, no, where are we? yeah. The oxen likewise, and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, clean food. No additives, no smog, no. Which has been whittled, whittled with the shovel and with the fan. So harvest is harvesting is going to be pretty much the same in the millennium. There shall be. Well, I don't think there's going to be any child. I don't know. And there shall be upon every high mountain, upon every high hill, rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Oh. All this greatness and this do are fallen. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. That's not today. If it was, you would have a bunch of people down here in Daytona Beach naked worshiping the moon. Getting a moon tan. Be as light as light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. Now you know there has to be a new uncursed environment in the millennium. Because if you had the sevenfold sun today, you'd be crispy. You step out and you be a pile of dust. Burn. You'd be cancer. It's not today. As the light of seven days. Oh, that's bright. In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, fixes that hole, and healeth the stroke of their wound. Listen, the money is it's the healing of Israel. It's doing get in Israel right and in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ as it should be. Isn't that great? Now look at this. Behold the name of the Lord cometh from afar. Uh oh. Giddy up. Burning with his anger. Second advent. The sword in his mouth. And the burden therefore is heavy. Uh oh. His lips are full of indignation. You know the God said let there be Get away from me. And his tongue as a devouring fire. And says one of the prophets that their, their eye sockets are just going to be consumed. Their eyes are going to be consumed their eye sockets. This is the lion. This is not the baby. And his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the net to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. Dividing the goats from the sheep nation. Look at that. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Why? They never followed. They never done what God told them to do. They've already are in iniquity. Like Pharaoh. He never got right. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart as when he, one goeth with a pipe, you know, that's a, a flute kind of thing, to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. You know what you're going to hear at night in the, in the millennium? You're going to hear gladness and music to the Lord. It ain't going to be this jungle bunny music. It ain't going to be rock and roll and stairway to heaven and all the crap. It ain't going to be the junk that I have to listen to at night at the grocery store where I work. It's going to be, praise the Lord. Worshipping God, worshipping Jesus Christ. There'll be a hymnal about Jesus. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of eyes in it either. It'll be all about Him. And no song will be unscriptural. The Lord shall, it's amazing, some of the hymns, the hymns are in the hymn books that are, that are sung today, and they are completely unscriptural. Oh, it makes me sick. The Lord shall cause 
His glorious voice to be heard. You ever heard what Jesus sounds like? One day we're going to hear it. One day we're going to hear the Lord Jesus Christ say, Come up hither and call your name. What was that? With that song in the garden and the birds hush their singing. And shall show the lightning, lightning down of his arm. With the indignation of his anger. Not to those that are saved. To those that are rebelled. And with a flame of devouring fire. With scattering and tempest and hailstorm. That's after the tribulation. That's the lion. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down with smoke with a rod. The Assyrians are the Antichrist. Type of Antichrist. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thy rod. Uh -oh. And in every place where the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, the Syrian, it shall be with tabrets and harps, and in battles of shaking will be will he fight with it. For Tophet, that's a study of himself, is ordained of old. It's a place of false worship. For the king is for the king it is prepared. He has made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much wood. And the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, does kindle it. And there's, there's that lake of fire in the millennium. Down by the salt the Dead Sea, the salt sea. The literal hell on earth. Coming. Not here yet. It's coming. 